Hey, how's it going? So, a uh, couple things. I'll probably be dressed like this a lot more often in videos going forward, mostly because I'm filming uh, like a video production thing, and I, I don't want to go into details. I'll tell you more about it when it's complete. Um, but for now, because I'm already doing that, I'm dressed like this for those videos, I figure I'll probably be dressed this way and capitalize on being at one of my close by work locations that allows me to come here and film. So uh, and long story short, you guys get a fancy dress teacher for the time being for many of the future videos from here going forward. Um, also, I did buy a mobile whiteboard. Uh, it will be delivered between October 5th and October 8th to my house. Hopefully that will allow me to film at home, uh, pending you know, lighting deals there and all that kind of stuff. I think it'll be okay. I think the lighting in the room I'm gonna use is pretty good. Anyhow, let's get started. Uh, last video I did, we actually already did it in the birth of the channel a long time ago, but on my files I did not find the video. So I don't know what I did with that video. Maybe it got deleted or something. Anyhow, 2013 AMC 10B Problem 21. Uh, this was also AMC 12B Problem 14. These problems are being done by request. All right, here we go to non-decreasing. Okay, so non-decreasing, does that mean increasing? No, it doesn't. If it meant increasing, it would say increasing. Don't read into things that it doesn't say. That's the number one reason a lot of things people make mistakes on these tests. So non-decreasing sequences of non-negative, it doesn't say positive. Zero is in play. Non-negative integers have different first terms, okay? Each sequence has the property that each term beginning with the third is the sum of the previous two terms, like Fibonacci basically. Uh, and the seventh term of each sequence is n, so they have the same seventh term. What is the smallest possible value of n? Okay, well, uh, how do you progress? We probably should suspect that there might be a time well, at least in, it's possible in the first two terms that we get two of the same first term. Uh, not for each sequence, but in within one sequence. Something like, you know, one, one, or something like that for the first two terms. Kind of like Fibonacci would be. Um, so that's possible. We should definitely be considering that. Um, the other thing is, you might get zero as the first term. It couldn't be the second. That would be impossible. Figure out why for yourself. Okay, then... Uh, let's just say we don't know what it is yet. Let's just call the first term A, second term B for one of the two sequences, and the other one C and D. Again, you might not know how this is going to work out. Maybe I don't know when I'm starting the problem, right? So, but it doesn't matter. Take steps. Figure out what you can figure out. What if? Right, we call this what if. What if the first term is A and the second term is B? Let's progress. Then this will be A plus B. This will now be this term plus this term is a plus 2b. This one will be these two added together is 2a plus 3b. These two added together is 3a plus 5b. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We need one more. 5a plus 8b. Okay, so we've got that. Then c and d is the same thing. Its seventh term will be 5c plus 8d. And we need those to be equal, so let's set them equal and then think about it. Try to analyze our situation from here, right? Uh, you reevaluate what you know now based on what you knew from before. So the thing is, we said some things. We said, wouldn't it be great if one of them could start with zero, right? If A, for instance, could be zero, um, then this would just become 8B. Now, obviously, the series that starts with zero can't have two zeros, or the whole thing would just be zero, and that wouldn't be equal to the other one. So, uh, in that case, uh, the other one, if we wanted it to start with the same term, it'd be like CC, and this would simply be 13C. Okay, so we've got a situation here. The smallest possible values for B and C that accomplish this, because A was zero, right? The smallest possible values would be that B is 13. There's no way that the product of these two things can be a multiple of 13 unless B is a multiple of 13, because 8's not going to be that, that way. So then let B equal 13, 
And then this is 8 times 13, c would need to equal 8. Okay, if we use that, what do we get? What is 8 times 13? It's 80 plus 24, it's 104. We see that answer. Doesn't mean it's right yet. It does ask, what is the smallest possible value of n? Well, we can now eliminate d and e. We know they're not the smallest possible. We've got one with c. In fact, you might not have confidence that this even works. You could test it. It would be 0, and then b was the second term of the 0 sequence, so it would be 13, and then c is the first term here, 8 and 8. Now, if you want to run these out, it's going to be that over there anyway. So you can be sure now, kind of just, maybe you just want a little bit more confidence is all. Run these out if you want. I'm not going to bother. Um, the question is, could we hit 89 or 55? And while it feels like this is most likely the case, we did operate on some assumptions that zero was involved. What if zero wasn't involved? Is it possible that it could have been smaller than that? Mm, I don't think so, uh, but what if we could just test this? What if we set 5a plus 8b equal to 89? Or we just want to feel more confident. We know the test likes to trick us. We can spend an extra 30 seconds to a minute to be more confident in our answer. So, uh, in order for this to work, this is an odd number. You can use number theory, by the way. I'm going to kind of lower the number theory and just do it with kind of logic. So, if this is an odd number, then this is definitely even. This number has to be odd, which means the possibilities for A are only odd values. So, uh, if I go to 85, right, the difference between here and here, meaning A is 17, the difference is 4, that's not a multiple of 8. So we go down to 75, the difference is now 14. 65, the difference is 24, that would work, but that makes A 13 and B equal to uh, 3. The problem with that, it's decreasing. and We can't have a decreasing, it's non-decreasing, so that's out. Then it should stand to reason that I can go down 8 from A, right, down to A equals 5, and up 5 with B, because that's going, you're basically decreasing the 5A's overall value by 40, but you're increasing 8B's overall value by 40. So that's why that works. So then B will be 8, and that's good. That's going to actually check out that it is increasing. The problem is the next one would have to be negative 3, and we know it's non-negative. So that's out. And this is the only one that works for that scenario. And since A and C have to be different, because it says different first terms, then this isn't going to work. That's impossible. Same thing with 55. Um, you just set that equal to 55. I'll just do it right here to save time. Um, again, this is going to have to be uh, an odd number in order for the sum of an even plus an odd to be odd. So it can't be 55, obviously. 45 uh, doesn't work, 35 has a difference of 20, 25 has a difference of 30, 15 has a difference of 40. That's going to get it done. That would mean A is 3, and 8 times 5 is 40, B would be 5. Um, again, from this point, A is going to have to go down by 8, and B is going to have to go up by 5. You dip into the negatives, that is out. We don't just think that we're right. We can guarantee it. It is the only possible answer. 100% certainty. That's what you want on the test. That's how you avoid mistakes. See you in the next video.